Okay, let us begin, folks. Uh, social cognition part one. Uh, going to split this lecture up into three videos. And uh, let's see. I'll talk about this in live class, so I won't go into that. But let's get into social cognition. Okay, so uh, as I already said, and as you probably already should know, that social cognition, what we're talking about, is you know the people part of the social world it's just like cognition but for people and cognition is about how we interpret analyze remember and use information and we've mentioned talked about that before so let's look at our outline of today's lecture social cognition a very wide field had to limit myself a whole lot uh, but we're going to talk about the basics uh, dual processing, schemata, priming, mood and memory, heuristics, impression formation, uh, the negative and optimistic biases, and wrapping up with counterfactual thinking. Uh, the things that I think are important and the things that, frankly, I just like talking about. So let's get to the basics. Uh, the first basic we've already talked about, dual processing. Uh, that's the term that is officially used for the two cognitive systems, the implicit versus the uh, implicit processing system. So here in our example from the Stroop effect, uh, we see that you had problems uh, saying blue uh, when you saw this slide and orange when you saw this slide. Oh, by the way, Anybody ever realize or think about why uh, you know the demonstration used the word cerulean? Uh, well, think about that for a little bit. And if you understand dual processing, uh, you might be able to come to the answer to that. And uh, that would be a really good question to put on the uh, first exam. Uh, why cerulean as a word in the Stroop effect? What would it do? What would would it be the same as? For example, red. Okay. So don't need to talk more about uh, dual processing, uh, but we do need to uh, introduce, at least I hope to you, again, some schemata. Uh, the uh, singular is schema, the plural is schemata. And so uh, schemata are frameworks centered around a specific theme uh, that help us organize social information. So there are frameworks around a specific th theme that help us organize information. So let's uh, you know take a look at a schema, and this could be a schema for bears. Bears are big; they kill people. They come in black or browns, and they have claws. And so that's all that a schema is. It's our information organized social you know information about something we know about uh, of course this is a general example uh, social cognition deals with social schemas social schemas are about people uh, but this is a basic example and then a uh, couple other things about schemata uh, we can have exemplars of schemata that is this is an exemplar of the bear schemata uh, in that this is a really good example of the schema. That is, if I say bear, probably most of you think about that. Uh, but, you know, to illustrate what I mean by an exemplar, uh, this is a bear, a panda bear, but probably when I said bear, not very many of you thought about this guy here uh, sitting around eating bamboo. We don't have to worry about him. Uh, so, uh, you know, again, that's what an exemplar is. It's a good example, and you know, there are of course bad examples of a schema. And then also, finally, prototype. A uh, prototype of a schema is the perfect example. And so this is like an ink drawing, because an exemplar is something real. You can point a picture at saying that's the perfect example of a bear. Uh, you know and you could probably like grade different pictures of bears or grade different bears as how good of an exemplar they are. 
uh, but a prototype doesn't exist in reality. It's uh, something that exists only in our minds, and it is the perfect example of a bear. So as an illustration of that, I have a drawing of a bear, a uh, perfect example in that artist's mind. Uh, <clears throat> so schemata influence, <coughs> excuse me, I'm coughing, hay fever season. <coughs> <clears throat> okay, back after my coughing fit. Uh, so, schemata influence three basic processes. Uh, attention, that is, why am I not, there we go. Uh, sch schemata affect what is being noticed, encoding and retrieval, uh, what is being stored in memory and what is being recovered from memory, and processing, uh, how we perceive and what we uh, perceive and what we conclude about what we perceive. So let's take a look at this example of uh, how uh, schemata affect what is noticed or attention. This is an awareness test. How many passes does the team in white make? The answer is 13. But, did you see the moonwalking bear? Go! Okay, this is a great ad for uh, being aware of cyclists. Uh, but it illustrates, oh, let me go back here so uh, we don't uh, get confused. But it illustrates how uh, schemata affect what's being noticed. Uh, when we are watching basketball, we have a schema about basketball. And probably uh, players, uniforms, passes, uh, traveling, those are pieces of information in our schema about basketball, but not bears. And so uh, we're focused, the schema aids us in that uh, it allows us to focus on what's important because we know we're looking at uh, basketball, but then again it biases us and works against us in that we won't notice other things that are not part of the goal that we're looking at. And that's general, uh, you know, cognition. When we get more into social cognition, uh, we run into something called perceptual confirmation. And this is when if a perceiver has a belief about someone, they are likely to notice things that are congruent with that belief. And that's basically it. So let's say that the perceiver uh, is meeting somebody and they say that, uh, you know, I've heard he's a friendly person from other people. And then the target, uh, is, you know, behaves like a normal person. Sometimes they're friendly, sometimes they're unfriendly. Because the perceiver has a schema uh, which says this person is friendly, they're going to mainly notice the things uh, that he does which are friendly. And they are going to be biased towards concluding that he is friendly and that's perceptual confirmation. The perceptual confirmation of a schema. So there you go. And then uh, schemata affect what's stored in memory and what is recovered from memory. That is laying down memories and remembering. So uh, a couple examples of how they can do this. During storage, let's say that uh, you're gonna meet somebody and I say, oh, by the way, Mary is a lesbian, or I, in another condition, I would say Mary is a librarian. And then you meet Mary, and you talk to her, and you observe her, and then later on I'm going to ask you to uh, you know, recall things uh, about Mary. And if I told you that Mary was a lesbian, you're going to be more likely to remember things that are relevant 
to the lesbian schema. If I told you that she's a librarian, you're going to remember things that are more relevant to the librarian schema. And then in retrieval, let's say that you meet Mary, you talk to her, you observe her, and then after Mary goes away, I say, oh, by the way, did you know that Mary is a lesbian or a librarian? And again, uh, if I told you Mary is a lesbian, you are going to remember more schema relevant information that is more lesbian relevant information. Uh, and if I told you she was a librarian, you're going to remember more librarian relevant information. And so what we do is we use these schema schemata to really help us storing memories and retrieving memories. And they do uh, in that we have a goal of remembering information about people. And as long as our goal and our general understanding of the situation is correct, the schema is going to help us. That is, it's going to guide us to remembering the important information about that person. I'm a college professor, and so you are motivated, to, or your goal is, to remember important things about me. And if it's important that I'm a college professor, then your schema should guide you towards that information. Uh, so that's the positive side of schemas. The negative side is it kind of makes us forget information that isn't relevant with the schema. And schema schematas, oh, I skipped one, schemata uh, affect what we conclude. And here we're talking about the confirmation bias. Where's my, oh, there it is. I can hardly see the pen in some cases. The confirmation bias is when perceivers actively seek out information to confirm their original beliefs. So this is more than the uh, you know, uh, you know, perceptual bias, but this is an active bias. And let's see how it goes. So a perceiver begins with the stereotype or the schema that the person is friendly. And so they're interacting with the person, and so since they've heard that the person is friendly, they're going to, you know, see if that's really true, and, uh, you know, they say, would you like to go and get some lattes and talk sometime? And the target says, sure, you know, because what, is he going to be a jerk and say, no, screw off? And so the perceiver says, see, he is friendly. And so, let's erase this, get it clean. Oh, I want to clean everything. Whoopsie, what happened here? There we go. Erase everything. Now go back to a pen. Okay, so what's going on is that the perceiver has orig original belief or a schema about that person, that they're friendly. And so what they do then is they want to test it. But notice what they do to test it. They uh, test the schema, but they just, you know, but then again, how would somebody who is not friendly respond to that? You know, and you, if you think about it, this is a biased, one-sided uh, question. You know, what if I say, uh, you know, would you be interested in going out, you know, and get some coffee sometime and talking? Or are you not into that thing? That would be a more unbiased question. But in experiments, what happens is that we discover that people ask very biased questions, and the questions really are designed to confirm the original schema that they have about a person or the original hypothesis. And so uh, what happens is that people begin with a belief about a person and they generally tend to act in ways which would encourage that person to behave in the uh, way that they originally think that they would respond. And so that's the end of part one. We'll pick up on that and some other ideas uh, in a few minutes. Oh.